absolutely nothing wrong in wanting a change or a better way of living. There is nothing wrong in airing your voices. But there is everything wrong in and Julian don't don't don't, don't fry Regina Daniels after an advice to the protesters. Half of the country they complain say a hardship day, like while other half of the country they complain say the country good. Now who they do themselves? Since we they bomb me, we don't need pray for this country to make it good. Up till now, this country can they be like say it they worse than every day without any plans, as in no plans they on ground for this country to move forward so as the matter has been uh, based on the hunger protests when nigerians talk say uh, that first of august now then go start time but ever since they put this date and uh, so many people don't they fight the protest but my question be say this protest to ah uh, now war i be na peaceful protest now did they talk so because right about now nigerians don't fool the streets of lagos delta state edo state so many states now only come out small small even this woman don't carry a baby and this madame too don't carry in uh, to come and tell you say water don't pass a carry Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're seeing this video, and a happy new month to everyone. Today is August 1st, which is the one of the national protests in Nigeria. We all know that the masses are suffering. We all know that the masses want a better way of living, hence the protests. And there is nothing wrong in protesting, absolutely nothing wrong in wanting a change or a better way of living. There is nothing wrong in airing your voices. But there is everything wrong in violence. Once violence gets involved, it defeats the whole purpose of a protest. So please, I urge everyone to try and make this protest as peaceful as possible so that the voice of the masses will be heard and actions will be taken on it. And everyone will return to their homes in one piece. We have seen series of violent protests. We know how it all went. All we can hope and pray for is that this protest goes differently and still your voices will be heard and actions will be taken on it. Once again, this is a call for a peaceful protest. Thank you. Good day, everyone. It is day two of the national protest in Nigeria. Everyone is frustrated nationwide with justified reasons. And something needs to be done to ease the hearts of the people, to avoid further loss of lives and properties. Nigeria is not a one-man's land. Hence, it is not a one-man's problem. Nigeria can only be fixed by the collective efforts of everyone in the government, ranging from the president, the governors, the senators, the House of Reps members, the House of Assembly members, down to local government chairmen and councillors. What happens when the federal government understands the plight of the people and the state or local government does not? Or vice versa, the job still remains undone, leaving thousands hungry, suffering and jobless. The hike in prices of food, water, electricity, transportation, security and communication is alarming. There is hunger in the land. Nigeria cannot be fixed by having half bad eggs and half good eggs. All the lawmakers need to be in sync with the people's plight to fix Nigeria. Only then can what is rightfully allocated to the grassroots get to them. This should be a government for the people, not against them. And our armed forces, please refrain from using excessive force on the people. As everyone has a right to air their voices and demand for transparency, accountability and participation to avoid further loss of lives and properties by our own people. Thank you. 
Nigeria. It's a shame. It's a very big shame in this country that is not even ours. We benefit from them. Why can't we benefit from our own country? And it's a rich country. Nigeria is a rich country. Why are we suffering? Why are we traveling up and down? People die on the road traveling to the Europe. To Europe. People die. They they they, 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 they could travel by road and they die. Some of them die on the road just because they want to leave Nigeria because the suffering is too much. Why do you see that people are suffering? You as a president, people are suffering. They can't even find food to eat. A lot of people are suffering in Nigeria. Go to Nigeria. Everyone has become beggars. But the government, they have the right to buy private tech. People have the right to buy private tech. Yes. When people are suffering, they cannot even eat a they meal. A meal. They buy S they, they bought SUVs for people. They built houses for Fatima. Does it not have a house before? Why are living in the bush? Why would that be the house here when people are hungry? When people are hungry, they hide palliative. They hide palliative from us. Palliative, under the injury. These criminals hold it from us. They don't want us to eat. They don't want us to eat. I wouldn't be here if Nigeria was working. This is not my country. But Nigeria is not working. You go to school and come to finish school, you cannot get a job. You cannot find a job. You come to this country today, you find a job when it's not even your country. Why can't our country be like that? We don't have road, no good road, no water. We, you build a house for yourself, you provide road for yourself, you provide the uh, never bin, a never phone for yourself, you provide for a wire. They will just bring bin. All they know is to bring bin. They won't even see the light, oh, but they will bring bin. And you must pay. Why? Okay. What Why? 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 I did that same work. Now again, you are bullying us. You don't want us to do what you have been doing for years. Yes. Is that how it's been done? No. Now the police is here. Now thank God the child came here in the morning. Because if you guys, I'm very sure you didn't come on time. They were here. They tried to bully us out. No, I will be sincere. They tried to bully us out. Yes. Lagos VTM. Lagos VTM was also present. Yes. So we have to stand by our word. We cannot continue like this. We are Nigerians. These struggles must continue. Things are very high. And we cannot continue to keep silent. That's why we are here. And of course, you can see now, it's not sponsored like they claim to be. Now it's peaceful. Look at all out here. We are making sand now. DJ is coming. We have good sand. And by tomorrow, this is where we are going to do all the service. service will not be heard. We have a court judgment on subs, uh, court ruling, court order on subsistence service, which the barrister, barrister Deja Day and is leading them, is aware of. The subsistence service said that the order is that they should protest inside the stadium. And we requested that each group that we, that we protest has to come to the police and notify the police. No group has notified the police. We only came here to see some people here, and we said, for the fact you have not notified us and you want to protest, uh, protest follow the court order, which the Jade and the barrister is aware. The order said, protest inside the stadium. We are not stopping anybody from protesting, but look at how they are blocking the express road. And I said no, because where their right stops is where another man's own stops. Because as they are infringing into the right of way of people, it's not good. They are equally tramping on other people's rights on passage. And that's why I said no. They should enter the stadium where the court has given order that they should enter inside. They should carry out their 1,000 pressmen and enter the stadium and protest. They can transmit it to 2,000 world press. I don't care. So, have you spoken with Mr. Dejari Oju on this? Yes, I've spoken with him. He said I should give him three hours for him to organize them to enter into the stadium. I'm, 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 I'm giving him three hours. Okay. Um, so, what, what are your plans today? I'm here. This, uh, I am here. I am here. Okay. So... Dr. Well, Ruben, uh, Ayo, and Rufai, uh, that is the situation. But can you ask uh, him a question? Do you have any questions? Yes. For the can you ask him? Can you ask him that uh, in the event that uh, the protesters refuse to go inside, because it's possible they may also not listen to DG Ade Ade Yonju. He has a, a law enforcement officer and who is responsible for security in Abuja. What options are available to him? in the case of recalcitrance on the part of the protesters. Okay, um, the Commissioner, uh, should the protesters refuse to go in uh, because there is an obvious possibility of uh, the protesters being recalcitrant, uh, what are the options available for they are, you? Then they are not law-abiding.
It's not me that gave the ruling. It's court order. So, what so if, if, that you if they want, if they want to breach the court order, they will. Bre they are breaching the court order. It's not my order. It's not the order of the Inspector General of Police. It's so not what, the order so, of anybody. So what will he it's do? The order of, uh, so the what court, options are available? What will he do? The court. So, uh, if they so if they're doing it, what, if they're doing it against do? court order, they know they are equally disobeying. So the what court are the order. consequences? They should know the consequence. The barrister is here. You don't know the consequences? The barrister is here. He knows the consequence of disobeying court order. Okay, are you willing to tell us the consequence? I'm not willing to tell you any because he knows the consequence. He's that is leading them. Okay, let's invite uh, Barrister Dejiade Oju. Yes. He's here, also here with us. Yes. Uh, we understand that the police commissioner has appealed to you, has spoken to you, that uh, you should move the protesters inside, which is according to the court injunction. That's according to the police commissioner. Uh, what's your response to this? The protesters are, 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 the, the, protesters are at the stadium. Are we not in the national stadium? Yeah. The court order say national stadium. They have refused to allow us to go to Igu Square. We say we will not confront no, them. What the police commissioner is saying that inside the uh, national the stadium. The court, the court order said stadium, national stadium. That's what the court order say. Koniman die, Koniman bury him. You understand? Koniman die, Koniman. He's a Koniman. I'm also a Koniman. So he has spoken to you now as the commissioner of police in Abuja. Are you willing to. Are, are we not co complying? Are we not at the state? Are we at Igu Square? Okay, but if he this is my big brother. If he insists that you should move into the national stadium, yeah, then they have to carry us you? in. Yes, I've gone to does. speak as a lawyer. I've advised the protesters. I said, listen, if no matter how uncomfortable you are with a positive court order, whether it is interim, interlocutory, or perpetual, you must try to comply. You must, the, the law must see you taking steps to comply. You can see that. People kept, but protesters called me as early as 5 a.m. 5 this morning and said they're going to stop the, the Igu Square. And I advised them that they should not go there. That they should not go to the Igu Square because if they do that, they'll be disobeying the court order. Okay. You so, we, we, we spoke to the police commissioner earlier on about the options of you refusing to move inside the stadium. And he said, you are, you are aware of the consequences. So are you prepared for the consequences? And what do you think would be the consequences of you not moving into the main bowl of the national stadium? Very simple answer. Simple answer. You see, because we are in the stadium, we are within the ambit of the law, complying with the positive order of the court. Because we are in the, we are in the vicinity of the national stadium. Do you understand? We are not in the three-arm zone. That is why, you see, my appeal before the CP came, you see how peaceful and serene the place was. But with the CP's presence, the atmosphere is charged. So my appeal to my bigger, big brother is that you should not take steps that will make the protest degenerate. It's an appeal. You understand? Thank God that he's somebody that I respect and he has a lot of respect and regard for me. So my, my, the idea of me coming here is that I will keep appealing to the protesters and I will keep appealing to the authorities because without this synergy, the country cannot work, and this protest will not be as peaceful as we want it. So, I, let me further appeal to the CP, who is my brother, that he should de-escalate the situation. Do you understand? Okay. He's, a, he's a conflict manager. Okay. Um, you, we're still talking about consequences here, yeah. Yeah. and the police commissioner felt so sure that you know the consequence of disagreeing with him on this issue. Okay, where, where are we? Are we not at the national stadium? We are at the national stadium. That's why I have spoken about the issue of Konim and Dai, Konim okay, and Berry. Okay, obviously, you don't want to talk about the consequence of moving Which into the national stadium. Because we are in the national stadium. Okay, but, but now, talking about consequences. And, and, and you know that I've actually not seen the order. I've not seen the order. All, all, I, have seen, all I have seen are news, news reports. And because, because I'm a lawyer, I, am, I, I must, whether the order is genuine or not, I must advise the protesters to comply. Okay, okay. finally, the, the federal government has called for constructive engagement yeah. with the government between and the mass... It's not for these problems. It is, it, is not, it is not a psychological problem for each and every Nigerian. The reason why we are here today is not because of anything. It's because we want a better Nigeria. 
A senator cannot be sleeping in the house of assembly and is collecting millions. Why are our soldiers are dying in South East South Forest? They don't have this problem. They don't have this problem. They don't put this in Nigeria again. Imagine I am a mother, I am a new, I am a new mother. My child, my, my, my daughter of three months is at, is at home. I cannot afford to buy me for her. I have to do her. I have to do exclusive breastfeeding. The price of land now is now 8,000 something. If you want to buy a carton, it's 81,700. Something that we have buying 1,200 before. I am almost 40 now. I have been hearing God, please, let Nigeria change, let Nigeria change. But Nigeria is getting worse. We are no longer praying, but we want to come out and come and protest. If prayer is not come the people are dying. In another country, in another state, Mama, our farmers are dying. Our, our government are not just going to, to turn our farmers. Them go for that one. Our farmers are dying. We are, we are now hungry. So now, go men, get right to the police, to go back in the real weapon. Our government, tell army, go on. But in the particular forest, they don't let them again. Why? Our demands number one. Demands number one. One. Our demands number one. One. Demands number one. One. Demands number one. One. Reversal of West of Sudan. Reversal of West. Reversal of West. From 29th of May 2023, the price of oil was 165 naira. Today, it is 650 naira. Our demand number one, the vassal of oil. The vassal of what? Why? Because? Why? Because? The money they are saving from the removal of oil subsidy that is meant to be used in other sectors that of the economy. Budget. They are being shared by the politicians. Demand number two. Demand number one. Two. Demand number one. Two. Demand number one. Two. Fixing of the exchange rate. Fixing of what? Fixing of what? Fixing of what? Fixing of what? When Tulubu came in, the dollar to a naira was 461 naira. But today, it is 1,600 naira. 1,600 Tulubu, she should reverse that policy. All this economic policy, they are not favorable to us. If we don't know where we are going to, we should know where we are coming from. Demands number three. Demands number one. Demands number one. Reduction of cost of governance. Our senators should also be. Hello. Reduction of what? Reduction of what? Our senators should be receiving the minimum wage. Our senators should be what? Good morning, Nigeria. Today is the hunger day. We all promised you that we are going to be on the street of Abuja. And hunger has brought me out. I, can't, I don't have money to buy fuel. I don't have money to buy whatever. There is total bad government. And I think I'm encouraging each and every one of us that the government has used propaganda, fake news, to tell you that the protests have cancelled. Look at us on the street. The protests have not cancelled. We are on the street. It's 10 days. And if our demand is not being made, 
we will remain on the street till our demand is given. Hunger has brought me out. This equity has brought me out. Poor housing has brought me out. A lot of things that is going on in this country. We can't just keep quiet as a nation. I'm advising every one of us to come out and exercise our fundamental right as a people. What's your name? My name is Emmanuel Larry. Drink Gary now. One thousand will not take you of drinking Gary. What you said before, before hundred naira, you will drink Gary and do what you want to do. So now we are we are coming to make him to know that things are very hard with us. Let him consider us. Thank you. So um, we're also going to be talking to one of um, the protesters who would also. But before that, if you are new to our channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And to all our long-time subscribers, God could bless on a plenty. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell to never miss tutorial stories like.